Now, when he wrote the book Quantum Theory, he, there was a famous debate between Einstein and Bohr. On, uh, Bohr Einstein felt that there should be a way to show quantum theory was incomplete. And he thought of a, a, a sort of mind experiment with, with two other physicists, Podolsky and Rosen. And it was called the einstein rosen Podolsky paradox. And it suggested that you took two particles and you move them apart. The corollary, you move them apart. If you, do, if you do an experiment on one, certainly you're going to disturb it. But how can that possibly affect this one? So by experimenting on this, you can infer something about this without ever touching it. So somehow I must be able to know both the position and the velocity of this particle because I'm not disturbing it. I shouldn't be able to know those, and which quantum theory says you can't know it. So Einstein thought, fine, I found the flaw. I found a way of finding these two things which quantum mechanics denies, so it must be incomplete. And Bohr wrote a very subtle paper sort of saying that that's not true. And that the way you use this, this phrase, the disposition to make a measurement will change the thing. When quantum mechanics was being formulated in the early 1900s, Einstein felt uncomfortable about how complete a theory it might be. In 1926, he wrote to Max Born expressing his misgivings. Quantum mechanics is very impressive, but an inner voice tells me that it is not yet the real thing. The theory produces a good deal, but hardly brings us closer to the secret of the old one. I am at all events convinced that he does not play dice. The reason for his lack of confidence in the theory is exemplified by what became known as the einstein podolsky rosen paradox, or action at a distance. For example, here is an initial radioactive particle with a spin state of zero. The particle loses some energy as it decays and produces an electron and a positron that move away from each other at the speed of light. In the process of being created, the electron and positron have become entangled or correlated because if we measure the spin state of the electron, we have seemingly fixed the spin state of the positron instantaneously without touching it. So the paradox is that as nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, there is no known mechanism to explain this phenomenon. This is sometimes referred to as action at a distance, or non-local effects, and quantum mechanics actually predicts this behavior. It was experimentally verified by Alan Aspect in 1986. Now what Bohm did was he reformulated Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen's experiment in a very elegant way in the book. So first of all he's reformulated in a very elegant way and secondly he's written a paper on hidden variables and a Scottish, Scottish or Irish physicist John Bell read Bohm's paper on hidden variables and said that I saw the impossible done. He was amazed at that and that got him thinking about the experiment that Einstein had proposed. So he thought about it, and he, he wrote it down mathematically in such a way that it could be tested. It was called Bell's Inequality. And several people read that paper. One of them was Alan Aspect in Paris, and he actually did the experiment where he took two, he took two particles took, they went far apart, several meters apart, and did simultaneous measurements and found they were correlated, even though they were a great distance apart. So that introduced something new into quantity. It was the idea of non-locality. That, that they're not, they can't be linked by any force or any field. It must be a new sort of, you call it correlation or co-relationship. And what it said is, maybe quantum theory is a passing theory. Maybe, it'll, you know, there'll be another one in a century's time. But that fact about the universe is, is an experimental fact. It can't be ignored. So whatever comes later, you have to have this idea of non-locality, which was really abhorrent to many, many physicists. Is it possible to say how many particles in the universe are correlated to some degree? Yeah, that's a more difficult thing. I mean, the idea would be you have something that's together and you pull it apart, but then if you thought of maybe the Big Bang, everything was correlated at one time or another. That's a, that's a, I mean, I, I, I don't fully understand that one, no. And I'll tell you another thing, it's very difficult, we talked about language, very difficult to talk about two particles being far apart, because you use the word far apart, and then you say they're correlated and you immediately think of something between them, correlated. 
I mean, as we talk, we have the limits of language yeah. to try and talk about that thing. But certainly, they, they're correlated. Uh, but um, the other thing that you have to be careful about is, is, is if you try to... The nice idea would be do, you want to shake this one, and this one's going to shake as well. Then what you've done is you send, you send information about here over to here at passable speed of light instantaneously. And you can't do that, because as soon as you shake this one, you break the correlation. So people, when this came out, some people said, oh, that could maybe explain how minds are connected, because there was somehow my mind, I can do something in my mind, it'll do something in yours. But immediately I do this, it will, it will disturb. It breaks the link. It breaks the link, yeah. And we can come back to discuss.